This video was brought to you by Ground News. On Tuesday, Tesla published its sales data for the first quarter of 2024. And, well, things don't look too good. In the first three months of the year, Tesla delivered just 387,000 cars, well below both the 485,000 cars they delivered in the last quarter of 2023 and the analyst's estimate figure of 450,000, a figure that had already been revised down from 530,000 last year. While production fell slightly relative to the previous quarter, Tesla nonetheless produced nearly 50,000 more cars than it sold in that time period, and now has overproduced in seven of the past eight quarters. And it's hard to overstate quite how bad these numbers are. This was Tesla's lowest delivery number since 2022, and the first annual fall for any quarter since 2020. These numbers are likely to force analysts to drastically revise their annual estimates, which forecast sales of just over 2 million vehicles in 2024. Now, given that this would require a 40% increase in sales to about 550,000 for the next three quarters, this now looks deeply implausible. Unsurprisingly then, these results have triggered a sharp decline in Tesla's stock, which fell by 5% on Tuesday alone. Now, in its report, Tesla blamed this drop on several factors, including its refresh of the Model 3, an arson attack against the factory near Berlin last month, and shipping disruptions in the Middle East. But while these factors clearly didn't help, they don't explain the persistent decline in Tesla's stock, which is now down 20% in the past month, 33% year-to-date, and 50% since its peak in 2021. This makes Tesla not just the worst performing stock in the so-called Magnificent Seven, which describes the seven big tech companies that kept the American stock market booming for most of 2023, but actually the worst performing stock in the year to date across the entire S&P 500. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at what's gone wrong for Tesla, why their stock is in decline, and whether this is a blip or the beginning of a bust. So let's get straight into it. Perhaps the main cause of Tesla's woes is the general slowdown in electric vehicle sales that we've seen over the past few months. Now, the only silver lining for Tesla regarding Tuesday's numbers was that their main rival, BYD, actually saw their sales decline even further, despite some pretty steep price cuts allowing Tesla to retake its top spot as the world's biggest seller of electric vehicles. Anyway, the point we're making here is the fact that other EV makers have also seen a steep decline in their sales is a symptom of a broader slowdown in the EV market. And most analysts seem to think that this is just a delayed consequence of rising interest rates, which have strained consumer spending across the world and made it especially difficult to buy expensive cars on credit as is common in places like the United States. But there are also specific reasons for this slowdown in both China and the US, which are Tesla's two big markets. Firstly, the Chinese economy is obviously having a tough time at the moment, and the property slowdown in particular has had an especially damaging effect on consumer confidence. This is because a disproportionate amount of Chinese household wealth is tied up in property. So when the property market wobbles, households have to aggressively tighten their belts. While in the US, the economy is doing pretty well, at least by global standards, and consumer confidence is actually pretty strong right now. But Americans are still turning away from EVs for two reasons. Firstly, even though consumer confidence is apparently strong, Americans are still buying cheaper cars. Budget car makers have seen record sales in the past few months, and the average price of a new car in the US has fallen from a post-pandemic peak of about $50,000 to about $47,000. Now, this is for a variety of reasons, including the lingering effects of inflation and high interest rates. But one of the big problems is the lack of charging infrastructure. Many US states have been conspicuously slow in building out charging infrastructure, which obviously makes EVs less attractive. And this should be especially worrying to Tesla and anyone invested in the green transition, because it risks creating a vicious feedback loop. Less investment in charging infrastructure will mean less EV sales, which will discourage investment in charging infrastructure, and so on and so forth. Conversely, more investment in charging infrastructure should accelerate EV uptake, encouraging more investment in charging infrastructure, 
Now, obviously, this slowdown is a problem for all car makers, but Tesla suffers more acutely, both because its cars are generally on the pricier end of the spectrum and because it doesn't produce any non-electric vehicles. Other car companies, including Ford, Toyota, and Bentley, have been able to mitigate this damage by shifting from EVs and towards hybrids. Now, Tesla has tried to make its cars more appealing by slashing prices, but this has only been moderately successful, in part because BYD and other Chinese EV makers have responded with their own equally drastic price cuts. You get the idea then. Tesla's slowdown is mainly due to the wider EV slowdown. Which means that, at the same time as Tesla's share of the EV pie is being eroded by upstarts like BYD, the overall pie is also shrinking. And they've been unable to offset this decline with their new models, which are just too pricey for American consumers at the moment. It's also worth saying that while Tesla's price cuts have stimulated overall sales, they've also disabused investors of the notion that Tesla is a tech stock instead of a car stock. For context, most car companies have a price to earnings ratio, that is the ratio between their overall market capitalization and their annual profit of about 10. In fact, take a look at this data, which shows most car manufacturers' PE ratios sitting around 10, way below Tesla's nearly 60. However, high PE ratios are far more common with tech stocks like Nvidia or Microsoft, which enjoy significantly higher PE multiples of about 30. This largely reflects the fact that investors see better growth prospects in tech stocks and recognize that, even if their annual earnings aren't always super strong, they still play an increasingly fundamental role in the economy. Now, Tesla has for a long time enjoyed a PE ratio more akin to a tech stock than a car company. That is in part because there's clearly some speculative investing going on in Tesla's stock, as evidenced by the sheer volume of options contracts. It's also because some people apparently consider Tesla to be more of a tech company than a car company. And to be fair, there is an element of truth to this, given their focus on stuff like batteries, software, and robotics. But Tesla's recent price cuts mean that their profit margin, which in 2022 was way above other automakers and more akin to certain tech companies, now looks much more like a bog-standard car company. And if this does make investors decide that Tesla is just another car company, then Tesla's stock still has a way to fall, at least judging by its P ratio. Now, obviously, this story about Tesla's earnings has been covered extensively by more than 150 news outlets across the political spectrum. 35% of that reporting is coming from the left, while just 14% is coming from the right. And these insights are all possible thanks to our sponsor, Ground News, a website and app developed by a former NASA engineer on a mission to give readers an easy, data-driven, objective way to read the news. As such, every story comes with a quick visual breakdown of the political bias, factuality, and ownership of the sources reporting, all backed by ratings from three independent news monitoring organizations. For example, in that story about Tesla's earnings, not only are you able to compare the political bias and headlines, you can even check out the factuality information and the ownership of the sources. At this point, our viewers are well aware of our appreciation of Ground News. It's an incredibly useful platform that captures information that you can't get anywhere else. And best of all, they're currently offering 40% off their Vantage plan, which comes with unlimited access to all of their features. So go to ground.news forward slash TLDR or click the link down below to sign up for only $5 a month and help an independent news platform working to make the media landscape more transparent.